Practice Community. Um, okay, so I picked us to do a crow pose class because it came up in our book club and um, Yasmin had never heard of this upside down crow thing you could do where you're on your back and you do a crow upside down and I said, we'll do it in vinyasa on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, my phone is ringing. Why do they keep calling me? No. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Um, thought I was on. I'm on do not disturb. Okay, hopefully they don't call me again. Um, there must be a setting with that where they can interrupt on Zoom. Anyway, so um, I told Yasmin that we would work on Pro in this class, and then Yasmin is not here. She must have slept in. She's also in North America. But anyway, we will do it anyway, <laughs> and then I'll tell her to watch the recording. <laughs> Um, so what are we going to work on when we work towards crow? We're going to work on our, um, a bit of opening through our shoulders. We're going to work on our core. Um, and we're going to work on the idea of like flexion through the spine. So kind of creating like a curvature through our spine a little bit. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> so come onto your back body. Oh my God, my phone is ringing again. I'm so sorry, guys. They cannot stop calling me today. <laughs> Come on to your back. Um, you can either bring your soles of feet together, or you can have your soles of feet on the mat, or you can just extend your legs long. And I'm just going to share this Zoom code with my friend who has not yet logged into the class. Oh, the technical joys of teaching online. It's so fun, isn't it? <laughs> I was saying, this morning, one of the beautiful things about teaching on Zoom is that it's not like the way yoga teaching is in real life. Your teachers seem very zen. They seem like they have all their stuff together. And I know I used to look at my yoga teachers almost like on a pedestal. And the thing about teaching yoga on Zoom is that you kind of experience reality, which is that our lives are just as chaotic as anyone else's. I can't figure out how to stop these phone calls from happening during my class. <laughs> my cat is jumping on the computer screen. The doorbell is ringing. You know, there's a lot of chaos and in the end, what it shows is that we're humans just like you, and we've come to this practice just like you for the very same reason, which is to try and find a bit of stillness and a little bit of peace in challenge and in stress and in chaos. And so maybe that can be our intention this evening or this morning, wherever you are. is just to find a bit of calm in whatever is happening for you, both on your mat and off. I'm gonna play a tiny bit of background music. I don't always play music in my Zoom classes, but please feel free to let me know if it's at all disturbing or if you can't hear me. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit to help you get into the flow. So let's take one more round of breath where you are. And then we're gonna take our knees into our chest. 
Take your palms onto your shins. You're gonna draw your knees wide. And then can you lift your feet up towards the sky and take your peace fingers around your big toes? And then rock from side to side. And if this is quite a deep variation, you can also just have your hands on your ankles or somewhere else on your feet. This is your happy baby. So our book club book, it's called Poser. And it's this woman who writes a memoir of her life and she um, has a metaphor for every single yoga pose. Anyway, one chapter is about crow and her teacher teaches her how to do crow on her back. And, and Yasmin was like, I've never done that before. And I was like, really? I feel like I do it all the time in my classes. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna do it right now. And the idea is for you to feel how it feels to be in crow, but upside down. Less commitment, less fear, yeah? <laughs> so you're gonna take your arms to the insides of your legs now, keeping the knees wide. And then you can draw your heels back and kind of point through your toes and engage through your core and just push your hands into the ground like you're pushing up and you're floating into your crow. <laughs> so the ceiling is the earth and you should feel that core engage a little bit. There you go. Now you can tell all your friends what you've done crow. <laughs> Take a few more breaths. And then come down onto the mat. Interlace the palms behind the back of the skull. You're going to curl up. Lengthen your right leg, tap your right elbow to your left knee and hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Can you cross the opposite way? Hold it here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one, do a little bit of moving, cross the elbow to the knee. Why don't we take five more, four more, three more, two more, and then one more, come all the way back in. Just take your knees into your chest. Rock back and forth, kind of up and down the length of the spine. And then what you're gonna do is rock all the way up and over onto the knees. Come all the way up into a tabletop. And then turn your palms so that they're face out. And then see if you can turn your fingertips towards the back of the mat. And then we're gonna move through some cat-cow flows, okay? So on your inhale, you're gonna tilt at your pelvis and lift your chin. And then this is what's gonna be different today. You're gonna exhale and curl up and pause. And then take a complete breath in your cat. So take a deep inhale. Take a deep exhale. And then carry on, inhale into your cow. Exhale into your cat. And then take a deep breath. And do it again. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Bring your spine back into neutral. Can you rotate your palms around now? And then lengthen through your right leg. Maybe you just stay right here, supporting yourself with both palms. Perhaps you lift the opposite arm. So lifting your left arm, your right leg. Stay balanced here, navel drawn in, gaze low. Three, two. On one, stay extended. And then on your exhale, curl and tap elbow to knee. And then can you take three more of these? Breath in, breath out. Two more. Last one. And 
and then inhale, extend. Land your left palm, land your right knee. Let's take the opposite side. So left leg extends, right arm extends. Find your balance, get steady. And then take an inhale. On your exhale, elbow to knee. Three more. Two more. And last one. And then inhale, extend. Land your palm, land your knee. Take one more cat cow just to kind of rinse that out. And then bring your spine into neutral. Can you tuck your toes? Lift your knees up off the mat. Now you're floating in a tabletop here, so you're not quite extended into your down dog. Just push into the ground and float here. And can you shift your hips back in space? How does that feel? Lengthening through the spine, take three, take two, and then on one, lift all the way up and back. Find your first Adho Mukha Savasana, your first down dog. Bend through the right knee, push through the left heel, and then switch it up opposite way. Walking out the dog, stretching through your calves. And then can you come into neutral? Bend the knees, gaze forward. Walk your feet up to meet your hands, front of the mat. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Take an exhale, fold. Bend through your knees, sit your hips back. Find yourself in your chair, your Utkatasana. And can you be okay with this discomfort and feel this fire kind of keep building in your legs and feel a little bit of a quiver and be like, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be here forever and I can use my breath to sustain. I can use my breath to stay cool and stay calm. This pose will pass. One more inhale. One more exhale, press through the feet, lift all the way up, lift through the arms. My head is cut off. Take your palms into heart center. Stand in stillness, hands at the heart. Inhale, arms up towards the sky, upward mountain. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half. Exhale, lower, plant the palms, step the feet back. Find your strong plank. If you need to ground the knees on the mat, it's all good. If you're okay with the knees lifted, can you keep them lifted and hold your body here? Use your breath. You got this. Five, four, three, two. And then on one, we land the knees. We untuck the toes, we slowly lower. Inhale, sneak up. Exhale the way back down and then push through a tabletop all the way up to your down dog. Nice, can you leave your left foot where it is, take your right leg up towards the sky and then bend through your right knee and then just circle out through the hip. Come all the way back into center, land your right foot. Take your left leg up and then circle, triple crackle. Lengthen, land the left foot. Bend through the knees, gaze forward, feet up to the hands one more time. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Sit into your comfiest chair. <laughs> Take your hands into heart center. Inhale. Twist, land your right elbow onto your left knee. Come all the way back through center. And then twist left elbow onto right knee. Come all the way back. You can hold your chair with your hands at heart center. There is this quote that life is 
10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it, and you learn it in yoga, right? No one wants to actively be in this pose. It sucks. <laughs> it's really annoying. It's really uncomfortable. But how can you teach yourself to react with a bit of ease, a bit of grace? How can you be calm about this? Stay for one more breath. Can you be calm about it? And then just exhale and empty sigh. Inhale, lengthen and lift. Exhale your way back down, plant the palms, step back, plank. This somehow became power yoga, didn't it? I'm sorry, guys. Hold for five, for four, for three, for two, and then one, journey through vinyasa. Come all the way up to your down dog. By the way, you can always skip vinyasa. I think you guys know that, but just to confirm. <laughs> Take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Draw your right knee in. Step your right foot wider than your hands. So you're coming now into a bit of a lizard, and you're going to slowly land your left knee onto the mat. And then lift up and push your right palm into your right thigh and just kind of open and gaze over the right shoulder. And you might take your right arm reaching back, back, back. Maybe gazing over the right shoulder towards the right thumb and maybe kicking the heel back, taking a little bit of a quad stretch. And then can you release the left foot Reach the right arm up, plant your right foot firmly on the mat, and then tuck your left toes, lift your left knee. And then let's spiral. So land onto the outer edge of the left foot. Step your right foot back. You got it. Side plank. Give it three, two, and then one. Take your right palm forward, and then vinyasa. Nice. Beautiful. Opposite side, left leg inhales up. Can you curl the left knee in? Take it into the chest, three, two. On one, land your left palm on the outside of the feet, or the hands, land your left palm, land your foot on the outside of the hands, land your right knee, come on the other end of the left foot and then plant the left palm and just breathe your body in this shape. What is happening? And then maybe reach the left arm back and perhaps you say hello to your quad. And if you have the foot connected, can you release it? Can you tuck through the toes, lift up into your strong side plank? Step your left foot all the way back. Find your plank, hold here, three, two. And then one, land your left palm. And then vinyasa. Come all the way back to your dog. Bend your the knees, gaze forward, step or hop feet to the front of the mat. Hold in breath, half lift. We'll exhale, fold one more time, come into your happy little chair. Hands and heart center. Inhale, lift at the elbows, and then twist. I notice that I say one more time a lot, <laughs> when it's not actually one more time. <laughs> Saw this meme on Instagram that's like yoga teachers who say stuff like that are the reason I have trust issues. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> Come all the way to the center, twist the opposite way, you got this. I don't do it on purpose. Sometimes I don't think about what I say. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Come all the way back, take a breath in. And then just exhale, get rid of that. Inhale, half lift. Exhale your way down. Step back, vinyasa. Or just come back to down dog. Nice. We're going to take one more warm-up flow. So you're going to take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. And then pull your right knee into your chest. 
And then this time you're gonna step your right foot between your palms, come all the way up, and open into a warrior two. So land onto your left heel, reach the right fingertips forward. And then take an inhale, reverse your warrior. And then take an exhale, come all the way forward. Windmill palms to the mat, frame the foot. Leave your left palm where it is as you reach your right arm up towards the sky. And then same thing as we did before, step back side, plank three, two, one to lay on the right palm, and then vinyasa. Come up to your down dog. Opposite side, left leg lifts. Draw the left knee in, step the left foot between your palms. Land onto your right heel, all the way up into your Vira two. And then inhale, reverse. Exhale, come all the way back. Windmill your palms to the mat, frame the foot, and now anchor through your right palm as you reach your left arm up. Step all the way back, side plank. Nice work. Vinyasa, so land your left palm, journey through your flow. And then you'll come all the way up to down dog. And then let's bend your the knees, gaze forward. Pop or step feet wider than the hands. And sit back into your squat. Just looking to see if I had a hole in my leggings. That happened this morning when I was coming into this pose. I realized I had a hole in my leggings. <laughs> that would be another example of how yoga teachers' lives are chaotic and human, just like yours. This afternoon, we're all good though. <laughs> Keep your right arm extended towards the side and take your left arm up, a little bit of a twist. And then take it the opposite way. One more of each. And then come all the way back to center. And let's just land our bottoms onto the mat, come into a boat pose. We're gonna do a tiny bit of core before we move through our mandala flow. So you're gonna lower all the way down, hover 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then on one, lower all the way down, cross your right thigh on top of your left. Take your right arm underneath the left. Find yourself in an eagle on your back. It's another one of those upside down poses. Curl up your elbow to your knee and then release it down. And we're going to take four more just like this. Three. Two. And then on one, lay back down, open your arms. Shift your hips over towards the right and then drop both knees over towards the left. This is your twisted root. Land the left palm, face over the right shoulder. Take a few breaths. And then come all the way back through center, unwind, uncross, recross, cross the opposite way, so it should be left arm underneath the right, and then we'll do our five little crunches. One, two, three, four, and then five, can you lay back down, can you open up? and then shift your hips this time over to the left and drop your knees over to the right. Twisted root on this side. Open up the arm, come all the way back through center, unwind. Okay, take your palms onto the backs of the thighs. Now let's try to do a fun yoga trick. You're gonna rock up and down the base of the spine, or the length of the spine, and see if you can rock all the way up into your chair. I lie, we're doing chair again. Take your feet onto the mat. Come up into your chair if you need to use your hands, it's okay. Yeah, nice. Three, 
two. And then one side forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, lower. Step back, vinyasa. Or you just come back to your down dog. So we're gonna move through a mandala flow tonight, and that means we're gonna move through the mat in a circular way. So keep your left foot where it is. Take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Bend through your right knee and stack the hips. Slowly unwind back to a three-legged dog and then pull your right knee into your chest. Hold here for three, for two. And then on one, you're gonna step your right foot between your palms and land onto your left heel and then come all the way up into a warrior two. Find yourself in stillness, right knee stacking above right ankle. And then we'll inhale, reverse. And we'll exhale all the way forward into extended side angle. And can you do this three more times? One more. Come all the way up now. Interlace the palms behind the sacrum. Breathe in, lift your heart, and then hinge forward, humble your warrior. Perhaps you let this be a moment to devote your practice to something. Whether it is whatever you believe in, Buddha, Allah, human potential, science, maybe it's just yoga. Maybe you're devoting it to a person. Maybe just devoting to spread loving kindness to, to the rest of the world. Come all the way up out of your humble warrior. Lengthen your arms, lengthen your right leg, and then hinge forward, reach your right arm forward. Right arm alongside right leg, left arm up. Bend through your right knee. Come all the way back up, warrior two. Lengthen through your right leg. All right, I have something fun for you. Bend through your left knee, sit back into Skandasana. The worst pose ever, in my opinion. <laughs> but can you just be in this pose and react calmly to it and be like, it's okay. This is happening and it sucks, but it's happening. <laughs> and then come all the way up. Lengthen, land all 10 toes to face the side wall. And then hinge your body forward, wide-legged forward fold. Slowly roll all the way up to stand. Turn your left toes to face the back of the mat. So we're going to rotate around. Step your right foot in, bend for your left knee, and then reach your arms up towards the sky. And then we're going to open them like cactus again. And then this time, your left arm is going to come underneath the right. And you're going to trust weight onto your left foot and hinge forward into a warrior three with your arms intertwined if it works for you. And if it doesn't, then release it. Tilt all the way up to stand and then just cross your right leg in front of your left and sweep your arms up towards the sky. Take a big inhale. And then exhale, hinge forward, dangle. Slowly roll all the way up to stand. Come onto the tippy toes, do your little swivel. Find your balance on your feet. Heels lifting, staying here for three. Hands on our center, two. And then one, ground your heels. Take a big step forward with your left foot. Left toes turn to the front of the mat, bend through the left knee. Warrior two, inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill palms to the mat, frame the foot. And then we'll do what we did during our warm up. Take your left arm up, side plank, step your left foot back, three, 
two, and then one, land your left palm, and then vinyasa. Nice. All right, let's wrap around the opposite way. So you start with your left leg extended, big breath in, bend through your left knee, stack the hips. Slowly unwind, can you curl your left knee in? And then step your left foot between your palms. Come all the way up, land onto your right heel. Bring yourself into warrior two, this side. And then we'll move through our same flows. Inhale, reverse. And then exhale, land the left elbow, reach the right fingertips forward. Can you move through three more? Two more. And then a last one. And then bring your body all the way back to upright, interlace the palms, breathe in, and then exhale, take it forward. Come all the way back to upright, lengthen through the arms, lengthen through the leg, and then hinge forward, bring your left arm on the inside of the left leg, reach the right arm up. And then press through the feet, come all the way up to stand, turn your, actually keep your left toe where it is, how could I almost forget this, Gandhasana. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and then come all the way back to upright, turn all 10 toes to face the sidewall, turn your right toes to face the back of the mat, step your left foot in, now you're on this 45 degree angle with your left foot, bend for your right knee, arms reach up and open, and then can you wrap your right arm underneath the left and maybe weave the arms together? And then trust weight onto your right foot. Hold your body in this warrior three if you can. Tilt all the way up, cross your left ankle in front of your right. Inhale, arms up. Can you hinge forward? Take a few deep breaths. And then slowly roll all the way up. Come onto the tippy toes. Do your little swivel, hands at heart center. Find your balance here. Three, two, and then one, land the heels. Step your right foot all the way forward. Turn to your right toes, bend through the right knee. Lift into your warrior two, inhale, reverse. And then exhale, window palms to the mat, bringing the foot one more time. You land through your left palm, you reach your right arm up, and then you step all the way back, side point like three, two, and then one, just vinyasa. Nice, find your way to your down dog, and then let's drop into a child's pose. Okay, so land the knees onto the mat, Untuck the toes, sit the hips back. Just give yourself a moment to rest or yeah, a sip of water or whatever you need. So generally in my vinyasa classes, we'll move through the same mandala a second time. And it kind of gives you a chance to almost take like a moving meditation. Once you're familiar and you know what's coming, you can almost just practice intuitively. Go with the flow. All right, let's take one more breath. And then make your way all the way 
out to a down dog. Keep your left foot where it is. Take your right leg up towards the sky. Bend through your right knee, stack the hips, and then maybe you flip your dog coming onto your right tippy toes, lifting your heart towards the sky. Come all the way back through center. Take your knee into your chest. Hover here for three, two, and then one. And then step your right foot between your palms. Land onto your left knee. Come all, not on your left knee, your left heel. Come all the way up, warrior two. And then journey through your flows. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extended side angle. Three more. And then come all the way up. Sweep your arms back. Press your palms. Lift your heart. Hinge forward. Humble warrior. Lift all the way to upright. Release your grip. Lengthen through your right leg. Shorten your stance. Hinge forward. Take your right arm alongside your right leg. Lift your left arm up. And then maybe you shift weight onto your right fingertips and your right foot. Ardha Chandrasana, perhaps you want to take it into Ardha Chandrasana, kicking the heel back. Just an option. Release your left foot. Step your left foot all the way back. Whoa. Flow into your Skandasana. And then lift all the way up. Can you turn your right toes, turn your left toes, bend through the left knee, find yourself facing the back of the mat, and then wrap your left arm underneath your right eagle. Trust that your left foot will hold you, lift off. And this time we tie up into our, um, our full eagle. <laughs> I was teaching a sober yoga class earlier today and I talked about how Eagle pose, it's like a metaphor for your life. And we can write stories about ourselves that we believe are true, right? Like I am defined as the party girl and that's who I am and I'm nothing but the party girl and I can convince myself of that reality. And the beautiful thing in binds and yoga is that it's a direct reflection of real life. And you feel the freedom that comes when you release these stories that hold you back. So stay all tied up for one more breath and then really, really feel that freedom as you inhale and release everything up and press both feet down and sweep energy towards you. And then place your hands at heart center. How does that feel? Cross your right ankle in front of your left. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hinge forward. And then roll all the way up. Come on to your tippy toes, do your little swivel. Keep your heels lifted. Wobble away. Feel the clarity and contrast as you ground the heels and steady and support yourself. And then step your left foot all the way forward. Your left toes point out, left knee bends. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, palms to the mat. Support with your right palm, twist through your left arm. Roll into your side plank. Take three. Take two, and then one to vinyasa, all the way to your down dog. One more journey. Left leg, inhale, bend through your left knee, stack your hips, perhaps you flip your dog, landing your toes, lifting your heart, and then can you spiral back inwards, take the knee into the chest, feel your quiver or your shake your wobble, 
step your left foot between your palms, land onto your right heel. Warrior two. Let's move like water, end like fire, reverse. Extended side angle, three more. One more. Come all the way up, lengthen through the left leg. Walk your leg, your right foot in, hinge forward. Trikonasana, stay or launch forward. Left toes, left fingertips, maybe kicking the heel towards the bottom. Chikonasana. Nice, extend your right leg out again. Step all the way back, skandasana, lengthen through your left leg, bend through the right knee, and then come all the way up. Turn your left toes in, turn your right toes out, square your hips a little bit, open your arms. This time it's the right arm underneath the left. You'll trust weight upwards and then cross your left thigh and maybe you can tuck the toes and get all bound up in this uncomfortable situation <laughs> and then tell yourself that you're not going to be here forever teach yourself that that everything changes and everything passes and everything in life is impermanent and then inhale, extend all the way up. Feel the ground between your feet. Take your palms and heart center. You're facing the right direction. Cross your left ankle in front of your right. Inhale, arms up. Hinge forward. And then we'll roll all the way up to stand. Come onto your tippy toes. Do your little swivel. Hands and hearts on it. And then rest your feet down. Step your right foot wide. Turn your right toes out. Bend through the right knee. We're almost done. We made it. Inhale, reverse. Exhale. Palms to the mat. Left palm roots as your right arm lifts up. And then roll all the way back. Side plank three, two, and then one through your vinyasa. And then once again, after your vinyasa, you're gonna come into your um, squat just like we did earlier in the class. So feet are wide, and then you sit your bottom down. So you might stay here. Just in a squat, if that's what you feel like. <laughs> and if you want to play around with pro, you might want to use a pillow underneath your head. That can be a nice thing to break your fall. <laughs> um, and if you want, you can just plant your palms on the mat and snuggle your knees, and this could be enough. Like literally just feeling the alignment. And then maybe you just lift one set of toes, and that is enough. And maybe you lift the other set of toes. It's like dipping your toes in the water. Like, is that a good temperature? <laughs> and then maybe you play with flying. Always trying to look forward rather than looking down. Just stay where you are for one more round of breaths. And then we'll just plant the feet back down, come back into our spot. You have a little pillow, slide it to the side. Come all the way back onto your bottom. And we're gonna roll all the way down onto the mat. So we've done a lot of 
forward folding today, a lot of like flexion, which is curving through the spine. So we're gonna counter that with extension, which is opening. So the first option is you could just come into your bridge. This is a great place to be, pressing through the feet, pressing through the palms, lifting the hips up, rolling the shoulder blades under, interlacing the palms. Okay, so you can stay here. Or you can place your palms alongside your earlobes and maybe press through the palms, press through the feet to come up to your full wheel. And then come roll all the way down. Take your knees into your chest. Open your arms and do cactus arms. Take a few deep breaths. And then drop your knees over to the right. Land your right palm on the left thigh, gaze over the left shoulder. Then open your right arm, take your knees all the way through center, and then drop them the other way. Come all the way back. Let's finish with one little inversion. So just take your legs up, just take your arms up. This is called dead bug, I believe. Some people call it waterfall. It's like Viparita Karani. It's like legs up the wall, but you're not against the wall. You're just in the middle of the room. And your intention here is to let the blood flow drop from the toes and the feet all the way back down through the legs and all the way back down into the back and the heart and the brain. And what teachers of yoga say that this does is this boosts our mood, helps us with back pain, helps us feel more energetic. Take the knees back into the chest. If there's any last little movements before a final resting pose, maybe another happy baby, maybe a Baddha Kanasana, feel free to drop into a shape. And then whenever you are ready, start to bring your body into your final resting pose for the last five or so minutes. It can be a meditation or it can be a shavasana or it can be another shape that will hold you. Just hold you in kind of stillness and
allow you to soak up this hour. identify the, the lessons that you want to take from it off your mat and into your life.
Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All I own, I. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Black bird, black. Black bird, black. Into the light of a dark black night. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Your fingers and your toes will wake up, wiggle. And a nice big stretch from your fingertips all the way through your toes. Take your knees in towards your chest to give your body one little hug. Thanking yourself for, for making this practice a priority. There's a million other things you could do and the fact that you carve out this hour of your day or week or, or month is huge. And then slowly make your way up to a seated shape. Taking your palms at your heart center. We close with the intention the ancient intention, but the original intention. It's been passed from heart to heart through thousands of years. So that our yoga practice remains steady and that our efforts remain continuous. And that our yoga practice serves and benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe, be happy, be healthy and be free. And may the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. And if you want to join for an ohm sound, we're going to inhale, exhale, and then inhale through to make an ohm. So take a big breath in and then a big breath out and a big breath in. you so much for for showing up for sharing the space and the practice the light within me sees and honors the light within you namaste Mindful Life Practice Community.